Developing an outcome guide is a backward design process. And the reason we call it a backward design process is that you start with who your learner will become, what your learner will be able to do, and from that you establish a purpose and you write your intended or your learning outcomes. And it's from these learning outcomes that you then focus on the assessments that you'll do to show whether or not they've satisfied that outcome. And then you also identify the activities or the skills, the abilities that are necessary uh, for the student to be successful in achieving that outcome. Um, in the outcome guide for this course, we also um, have a section where you take a look at the concepts and issues. And this is the area of what the student must understand uh, in order to be able to work through towards their intended outcome. And these guide and direct some of the instructional activities that you will do within your course or your workshop. And so that guides that. The prerequisites is really, you know, what do people need to understand before they even get into your course? So this backward design process um, is, is really important for you to understand and follow. And this template here that we've provided has some additional explanations to it that I would encourage you to take a look at. But get a sense of how this works because a practical application of this backward design process is realized within the course outcome guide or the chart for this course for 3210. So if we take a look at the final column here um, on the right hand side, here are the course outcomes that we've uh, talked about a variety of times. You can see them in the syllabus. Um, Everything from discerning and articulating the needs, selecting, using, justifying appropriate strategies for developing a course, developing the course, and so on and so forth. So you see all the outcomes that um, we have uh, included in this course. And then from the outcomes, you then see the activities that um, are, well, not the activities, but the assessment that is involved. For example, you're creating a course profile. This is one of the activities, a course, por course profile chart. Um, you're doing a rationale. You are doing a lesson plan. You are doing a syllabus. You are doing journal entries. So these are the assessment activities that we use in the course. The skills or the hands-on, the practical things that you need to do as you're going along um, are the worksheets, are the things that we're asking you to do, um, articulating whether or not you um, are going to do competency base or outcome space. All the sorts of things that we've had you do throughout this course that will help you towards building these documents that you need to create. Now this is also important because within the uh, uh, course outcome guide you also have themes, right? And if you take a look at the themes, you're really doing two or three things in the course. You're building a series of curricul curriculum documents, you're preparing a rationale for why you've done the things that you do to justify what decisions you've made about your curriculum design uh, methodologies you want to use, and you're reflecting on those things. So those three themes really sort of are the overarching things that you're going to be doing, and it and sort of covers off all the activities within the, within the course. Um, the basic concepts and issues, this is the stuff, this is the information, this is the you know, PDFs that we're having you read, these are the short little video clips that we're creating for you, this is the instructional methodology and the instructional resources, the readings that we have you take a look at, the things that you need to consider, that you need to understand in order to be able to move down this path. Understanding how to create a learning outcome, understanding the steps, all these basic as, uh, concepts and issues um, that are part of the instructional process. Now, there's one other key thing that you need to include within your course outcomes guide, and that is the main instructional strategies that are used in the course. Okay, uh, we've provided a PDF that identifies these, um, and you know, take a look at some of the things that you're going to be doing. Now, in the face-to-face -face class, you're doing in-class workshops. You're interacting with the instructor. You're doing homework. Well, you're doing the same thing online. It's really not that different. You know, you have activities you're doing in the class. You're interacting with with, with the instructor. If you remember, I'm continually asking you to contact me, set up a time where we can Skype or Zoom, right? You've got different activities that you need to do. You need to take a look at and research different things um, in your own scenario in terms of what you need to do. You're discussing and debriefing your ideas. You're reflecting your journaling. These are the main instructional strategies that are used in this course. So think about your experience in this course and use it as a wonderful example that you can use for your own 
um, outcomes based uh, course guide or course profile chart that you are developing. Once again, if you need any assistance, need some clarification, don't hesitate to reach out and touch base with me and I can help you uh, uh, develop your uh, course outcome guide.